folks and welcome to the Jetta TV. My name is NLO Jetta, bringing you this live broadcast here on the grounds of the Labrador Broadcasting System. Today is the turning over ceremony of, um, of the Director General of the, uh, um, the turning over and taking over ceremony of both Director General of the Labrador Broadcasting System. Um, official turning over ceremony of the Labrador Broadcasting System, the GE Marriages, Honorable Estella Labor Chief Kemo, uh, to Honorable UGL Facon, uh, Director General of the Labrador Broadcasting System. So this program is just, uh, is just about to pick up. So on the very soon, we just are going to go around as you be able to watch exactly uh, the people who have been seated in the field and then watching the portal truth is being on there. Uh, we are so sorry for the poor quality of the camera. We do apologize for the poor quality of the camera, but how be it? We are live here from the grounds of the uh, Labrador Broadcasting System uh, the cover. So, folks, I will just move around to this so that we can be able to just a few, few, few of these all, yeah? So, yeah, on the ground here, you have veteran journalists of people who have been into the media field for years, for years. They came to pay some respect to a friend, uh, to that friend of the uh, So, let me try to go in front. Let me try to move in front. This is, uh, the... This is Honorable Esther, that's the the awkward Director General here at the ground of the broadcasting system. Yeah. And also, this is the incoming, the incoming Director General of Honorable Eugene L. Patton. They are all here waiting on for the program to be so soon as they are soon. Alongside a few other things they are going to be here to all the people who are getting into the VIP for a very long time and now this is the portrait troop here who are dancing in the top of the So, so and very soon this program will kick up as we are without the people who uh, are so if we are joining, we So for that being said again, uh, uh, I know if you are just joining this is the uh, TV, we are live at the grounds of the Labrador uh, Broadcasting System, where today the uh, director of uh, Estella Camo will be turning over to Eugene uh, Pacon, who will be taking over the LBS. He was being, uh, he was appointed and confirmed by the Labrador Senate, so now he is the newly, 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 uh, Director General of the Labrador Broadcasting System, ELBC for short. Yeah, 
A very young lady who was fairly a fan of the the RBC and yeah, Estella Campbell, she's leaving, and you can fuck on the sticking over. Probably after the ceremony, after the sticking over ceremony, we might have the war with the both the outgoing director general and also the incoming uh, director general, and we will be also listening to them. Uh, what of us experience as being the head of the RBS, and uh, what uh, and what exactly you know she brought in new when she was the director general, and also we will be asking uh, Eugene Falcon what is new on his plate to bring in to the RBS. And uh, what exactly we hope to see after the few times after that, and in the next six months or one year, if uh, he, stayed, uh, at, he stays at the library broadcasting system, what exactly we are hopeful for him to uh, We are hopeful to see uh, yeah, the improvement of the system, or uh, exactly so. That's why we are here in the pair. I'm told that a few others uh, appointments are being made. So, Appointment rather, the other appointment was being made to aid uh, Eugene L. Falcon to uh, run the affairs of the Abrebrakati uh, system. Yeah. So, folks, if you are joining, this is the Jala TV. We are live at the Abrebrakati uh, system ground where today the uh, Eugene L. Falcon is taking over as Director General. So let us move on to the portrait of the So here is uh, Madame Esther Cuomo, the outgoing director general, and also the incoming. Official turning over ceremony of the Labour Broadcasting System, Director General Emeritus, Honorable Esther Liberty Kemu, to Honorable Eugene L. Fagon, Director General of the Labour Broadcasting System. Held on the LBS compounds here in Preview at about this time. Head of Embassies here present, veteran journalists, 
Director General Emeritus Honorable Estelle Liberty Kenyon and the Deputies. Honorable Eugene L. Fagu, Director General of LBS. Invited guests, fellow employees, ladies and gentlemen. I take this time to say you are wholeheartedly welcome to form part of this all important ceremony. It is hope that you will sit comfortably and enjoy the ceremony as the items of food. You are all welcome. Thank you. We'll call on Mr. Emmanuel Khan for a short. Please stand with me. Please stand with me. Let us talk to God. Emmanuel Kai is giving the invocation. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you because you're so good. Father, we thank you because even in the midst of all of the struggle of life, you can bring up our side. We thank you for this program. We thank you that you've been in our lives, that LPS can be transformed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that powerful prayer, Mr. Khan. We will now call on the cultural team for a special performance. Come on. <laughs> So the culture is being performed again, yeah.
247 Agent C. Jaguar. Mr. Jacket. Sorry for the mispronunciation of the name. Mr. Jacket for the Civil Service, Civil Service Agency. Just arrived. YouTube background flashes some liberty on the dancers on the porch or show. True background is from the Bombay County. A lot, of, a lot of supporters here on the live committee in for the county for me. And the man who stole the dance move. The baby stole the dance move. <laughs> a freestyle. <laughs> it's good at freestyle. I'm saying Nancy Bala so happy for our county. Mr. Mohammed Ko Colet. Finny caught in the shot, you see. The little guy killed the shoe. And then the picking drew is back, the low ball. kill the show. I cannot tell you no lie. I'm 
Pas de terre, on met juste de la vraie. That was an awesome performance from the Lola Jama Potter Troop from Bromley County. Thank you so much for that beautiful performance. We will now move straight to the turning over ceremony. And I will call on Honorable Estelle Liberty Kimu, Director General Emeritus LBS. Please put your hands together. So she's allowed to officiate. Thank you. It's a beautiful. I saw the Minister of Health and the Ministry of Information. Let me recognize him. Honorable Jerry McMahon, Pia. Honorable Eugene Martin, Director General of the Public Broadcast System. CSP Bus. Honorable Josiah Jukai. I see my presidents over there. Female Journalists Association of Liberia, um, Madam Lisa Diasse, media executives, colleagues, visiting guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Information Minister General. Let me take this time on behalf yeah. of the outgoing management team. Congratulate <coughs> formally Mr. Eugene Fagon over your performance. And to your team, if you are here, I'd like to also congratulate them. Three years ago, we had an opportunity, the management team and I, to spirit the affairs of the Liberia Broadcasting System. And when I say three years ago, because that is when I was appointed as Director General. It has been an awesome experience learning her for me in administration. And I want to report here, Honorable Minister of Information, Chair of the Board, Eugene Fakon, Director General, that we are turning over an institution that is functional with intent. I'd like to report that. Turning over an institution that is functional and intact. As challenging as it were, but with the help of my management team that's present here, I'd like for you yeah. all to please stand, Mr. Supper George, Mr. Tipendi Young and Isaac Red. Thank you. Along with the able staff, strong and high working staff of the Liberia Broadcasting System. We were able to sail through these challenging moments. Even though we didn't complete the tax, Mr. Eugene Fagon, but you are now on board. And I have explicit confidence that you, Mr. Fagon, you will do your best. I encourage you to be steadfast, humble, and work along with the staff, such wonderful people. And I want to admonish the staff as well to give on a provider the same support that you've given me over the years. Today is your moment for going to shine. I would like you to please step up. Turning over the microphone to so him. I will use the microphone as a symbol. This is a very powerful tool that you can use to change the lives of the ordinary people. Your witch, your advocacy, and all that. This is the time and this is your moment. I hope you turn over to you. Thank you. have the gabo in his hand to change a lot of things here. Yeah. Um, quickly before I take my seat, I'd just like to thank a few people that helped us along this journey. 
um, I like to recognize the presence of my family, uh, loved ones that help us through this process. I also like to thank uh, my colleagues that were at the Ministry of Finance that helped us a lot uh, through rough times. I like to also recognize the presence of my former boss, Mr. Aaron Cully, yeah. who has always stood by me. Yeah. And I'd like to thank you for that. <laughs> Friends, loved ones, I may not be able to mention any, everybody's name, but most importantly, I like to recognize uh, and thank the, the president, former president, uh, George Mani Weir, for giving me the opportunity along with my colleagues to serve in this lifetime opportunity. It's something I will remain grateful for. I will miss you all. Thank you all for the support. And I thank you all for the support. And please support Fagon again as he supported me. Thank you so much. Simple, very simple measures. Please thank you so to much. Encourage for the me. workers of the LBS to be supportive to Mr. Fagon as they were support. We now call on uh, Honorable Eugene L. Falcon, Director General of the Labor Broadcasting for a special statement. Director General Eugene Falcon's special statement will be made for. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. the broadcasting system. Our special invitees, some of whom are here, some are here, so we'll recognize a few, uh, the Honorable Kwame Clement, and I'm sure the nation shakes as they hear his name. Madam Wilma Mashinini Re, a veteran, the nation shakes again as they hear her name. The Honorable Aaron, Aaron Cully, the nation shakes as they hear your need. Many of the distinguished guests here today, the Librarian Broadcasting System, former uh, newscasters, broadcasters, executives of this noble institution, and I needed to use that in my address before moving on to officials of government to include the CSA boss here present, Madam Director General Emeritus, Honorable, and, and, and all of your team members, as well as officials of government here present, uh, fellow citizens, members of the Fourth Estate, members of the clergy. I have the honor most respectfully to say to all of you, welcome to the Librarian Broadcasting System. A place now of new hope, new beginning, new innovation, new thinking, and a place where you can now call home. Uh, the director said, please support Honorable Eugene L. Fagon, the same support you gave me. Honorable Director General Emeritus, I've been knowing you for many years. You're soft. Don't give me the support and you are out the gate. And the reason is simple. You don't come here to support me, you come here to work for the Liberian people. I too come here to work for the Liberian people. So when we come, we must work together and support each other so that the Liberian people can become the beneficiaries. And if that is not the case, you don't need to be here. It's the first warning. <laughs> Again, let's start. There was a reason for me inviting the veterans here today. When television was television and radio was radio before the war. I sat in my chair and watched many of you enjoy our cultural heritage. Today when we look on our television, it's Nigerian music and Nigerian movies. And all about they can tell you about the Nigerian stars and everyone else. But no one will tell you about the little man who trailed you moments ago. Under my stewardship, that is going to change. 
Our culture and our tradition will be on full display or nothing else will be on display. I took over about three days ago. I had a walkthrough of the system and the officer in charge along with heads of the various departments had a sit down with me individually. Estelle, you've tried. I worked in the government that you worked in. I know how you cry many days for few to run this system. I'm not going to cry. I have the microphone and I have the screen. And if you don't do it, you will be on the screen and on the 6 p.m. news. Thanks to my boss who has given me the confidence and said to me even up to yesterday. I want LPS to be a public broadcasting system. Yes. No more for UP or for CDC. So your president will be a presenter on an ELTV weekly broadcast for 30 minutes, Dub, change the tune. That is where I begin my journey. If I can get the president involved, I just spoke to my senior brother, the Honorable Kwame A. I teach. But I'm often free during the spring break. I come down in March and I say, will you help us? She says, sure, whenever you need me. Amen. It means when the veterans are coming home, Liberia is ready. Yeah. Let me start by saying this. When I said in front of the Senate that LPS will never be the same, I meant it. And I was speaking from an informed decision, having met the Chinese ambassador, something you work on, and with what I was able to present to him and prevail upon him, he sent for the China Railway Construction Engineers based in Ghana, and he came down and he said, we want to start this project. We want to say thanks to the government and people of China. LBS, your Chinese buddies are back and they're ready to help you. Yes. So we came on the site and they identify areas and your new complex will be over there. And so LEC will be coming to remove that pool, that pool, and the other ones. And so we can begin work on the new expansion of television and radio in this country. Amen. Thanks to His Excellency President Joseph Newman Bokai, the Honorable Minister and Chairman of the Board of Directors, and all of those, including the Chair, uh, Director General Emeritus, who's been working on the project, I only came like I always do to put the fire, and we are about to start. Yeah. Folks, it's not all rosy yet. Yeah, go, My friend and brother you see right here was one of the people I met. And his story is different, but I must tell it. I looked at him sitting in the crowd, he'll look quiet, but look at the job he does. According to Article 15, every Liberian citizen has the right, not the privilege, to be informed, and that state media should be accessible to them. That is the law. And the gentleman told me, he's been here for almost two years now, maybe. And he has worked three times a week on television like this. But he's been waiting to be absorbed and has not been given a dime as his salary. And I said to him in the presence of the HIO, are you around? I said, having been nominated, confirmed by the Liberian Senate and appointed by the President, nobody at this institution will take pay until he takes pay. And I gave her the reason why. I said the reason is simple. The deaf and the dumb, as you call them, they too are Liberian citizens. They too deserve to hang out in the state resources. They too deserve to share in it. And nobody gives it to them like he gives it to them. Therefore, he deserves to be paid. I saw a lady who was the base radio operator. And five years ago, she became the receptionist over there. 
but she's never been paid the salary of a receptionist. And don't blame myself. I know what happened. I know what happened. This institution has been strapped for a long time, and this woman was reduced to a beggar. I will not be a beggar. You won't do the right thing, or the right thing will do you. <laughs> and so, I called the chief engineer and said, we need to go on a tour. Where's your safety hat? Do you have safety boots? The answer was no. We've never had some since eight years ago. How do you do engineering work? No safety hat, no safety boots, nothing. I called the chief security officer. Where is he? Do you have radios on these compounds? He said no. How do you operate? Do you have a phone in that boot? He said no. Well, how do you communicate with each other from one point to the other point? He just stared at me. And so I pull it out. Where's the insurer? In the meeting and I show them. It's $688 US dollars for six radios that cover a six mile radius. And you won't tell me we cannot afford it for our own safety and security? That time has passed. used to be 248 employees, reduced to 146. And I know what Estelle went to because I was at the ministry, she was here. I know what's up. So at the end of the day, let me say this to you, 37 employees and uh, honorable CSA boss, you are my brother, that's why you are here. And on the professional scene, you are here. And you are new, we got commission today. Let me give you your first complaint. 246 employees reduced to 146. 37 of our people were retired and we asked for them to be replaced and we were told that government is not hiring. sir. Let me say this to you. Yeah. Replacement is not hiring. Yeah. The people were hired, they were retired. Therefore, they needed to be replaced. Yeah. How can we function? How can we function without a staff? We don't have people already. And the little we have, you're telling us, we're not hiring. The good news is, the government provides 60% of our budget. We're supposed to raise 40% on our own. In an economy that is trapped like this, that's why Estelle said, yo, please give your support, because she knows she had to beg them over and over to try. For me, I told them we got the microphone and we got the screen. If the people don't do the job that they are supposed to do, they are supposed to be on the six evening news. And we're supposed to be running behind them with cameras and microphones. And we will show them when they go in the restaurant to eat. So, let me say this. We are supposed to raise almost 600,000 from our business and marketing department to supplement or complement our budget. But guess how many people we have in the business and marketing department? Three persons. You heard it from the back? Three persons. No car, one desktop that freezes all the time, hardly any chair to sit on. How are they supposed to work? So, I don't want to bore you with our problems and the problems Estelle feels. Let me try to say some of what we're going to do to fix that. I've talked to friends 
And thankfully, when I was in the meeting, Chief of Security, you had the opportunity to listen, right? My friends are going to provide the CCTV camera circuits all around. My friends are going to also provide the security radios. Some of our friends are working to see how best they can provide the safety jackets, the safety helmets, and the safety boots. I am not going to the government for everything I need. According to the act that created this institution, it says I can solicit. The only thing, I should account for it. We went to Gubachow Market. 62 acres of land for LBS. And I was told it was given to the people by the former president. And I said, can I see documentation? And I asked for what Madam Estelle had written. Madam Estelle did not give any land to the government. The negotiation was on. I asked for the request from the president. There was no request. So I went to Gubachow Market and interacted with the people. And they said, we're still discussing. I said, thank God, LBS 62 acres is still intact. <laughs> Where there is no document, it did not happen. So I want to say, we come to LBS with challenges. Low motivation. From 248 to 146. We are up to the task. I meant what I said when I said LBS will never be the same. We will work our tail off. We will ensure that this institution become a public broadcast system for all Liberians, regardless of your religion, your political affiliation, your status in society. Everybody will be welcome and everyone will be served. Last but not the least, under my leadership, we we'll prioritize streaming for our staff. We will ensure equal work for equal pay. There is one, I'm going to land on this soft note, and if you want to laugh, laugh. So we sat in the meeting, and I said, who's the chief engineer? And the gentleman put his hand up. Who's your deputy? He said, I was deputy to somebody. The person got sick, so that's how I rose to the chief engineer. So I said, who are the other engineers? I said, is there any engineer here? And a lady put her hands up. And I said, are you an electrical engineer or technical engineer or what? She said, I'm a civil engineer. And I said, any other engineers? Electrical? No. Technical? No. Madam, you did well. But this microphone you gave me, we will not be silent. We will not beg those who are supposed to do their jobs. We will not look for engineers, we will hire them and the government and our partners will help us to pay. We will make sure we are staffed properly. That's why apart from our friendship, I invited the CSA boss here. <laughs> Thank God, yo! <laughs> we gave him three weeks so to adjust. Yeah. I made no secret after that every evening on the six o'clock news, you will see evil of our system. A picture will be there with a single dead cat. Because we need to replace our 37 staff members that were retired. And I'm sure the president will not be against that because we're short staff. But ladies and gentlemen, while I thank you for coming here today, one will ask, how will our TV and radio look going forward under you? It will be a public broadcasting system. 
It will entertain, enlighten, educate, innovate, motivate. But I come with a deep pride and sense of nationalism. If you want to play your homie music, I'm not against it. But if you play your homie music for one hour, you will play our music for one hour, 30 minutes, or there will be no music. But this is our country. I saw Big Sister Hawa and the kids. Some of our old programs will be considered. And under my leadership, one of which I am hungry to bring back is ELTV Action News. They told me about the camera. We understand. But Action News will be Action News. On Saturdays and Sundays, we were privileged to watch Balawala Balawala and cultural performance. I hope to see a, a program dubbed and style The Road to Kindija or The Road to Bissau. We must have meet the challenge again where our students can compete and show that they are highly skilled and educated. We must have the today's woman. Ma'am, I'd like to honor you if you stand with a round of applause for your contribution to broadcasting in our country. And this is Wilma Mashmini Rare. The Liberian woman went through a difficult war. But you saw what they did during the war, the, the war. When people sat in the evening, they waited for the name Kwame Clement or Aaron Cully. Maybe one of these days you will see them do what they did for you under my leadership. Sir, would you please stand for a round of applause in honor of what you've done, both of you. Please give them a big hand of applause. So with that, I'm coming with something referred to every year as the LBS Week. The LBS Week will bring together the veterans and they will show you how they did it. And we will pay for it with our mega resources here and this system. So, I'd like to say to everyone here, it will be a challenge. But we are up to the task and we are ready. And when I say we are ready, hopefully by the end of the week, you will be introduced to the new team that will manage the affairs of the Liberian Broadcasting System. Don't ask me any question with regards to that. What I said is what you should take. And when you meet your new team, they will be ready to serve you. Liberia, everything we do, do you realize that when it, come to, when it comes to every election year, the media plays a pivotal role in electing the next president, true or false? So why can't the media play, play a pivotal role in road safety? In the education of our girls, in the distribution of our culture and traditional values, etc. ELBC will work with other media institutions to make sure that broadcasting is, broadcasting is taking a new shape and moved to a new level. We will consider, not pre-recorded most of the time, but live performances like what you saw here will be on your screen. Today, I want to say this to you. Four vehicles, two down. And let me say this. Coming here this morning to go over for my commissioning ceremony, the car broke down to VOA market, Manka. And so I panicked, but then I called the officer in charge and said, can you send the LBS jeep for me? She said, oh. Okay, no problem. You know when your new guy taking over, everybody want to do everything for you. <laughs> but then when the guys were coming, and I call her and say, where are they? And she said, they're coming, they had to delay because they were on their way to the marshal to call the ceremony, but then you say your car broke down. 
I said, no, 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 no. Service first. Tell them to turn around and go take care of that. I will find my way. And I want to say, it's that kind of attitude that I come to help us with. It will be service to people and service to my country. And it will be nothing shy. Last but not the least. So I got to end on this south road. And I got to move for away just so you can see me. I called a business manager. I think I should only talk two of it. But if I tell the other one, they will get this. I saw the say kidnap. You know, you can't turn, you won't shake yourself. And I'm coming with this attitude that everybody that owes us have to give us something because we're strapped right now. We're broke. And we've got work to do. And I want to talk about Kenneth, but I asked the engineer, who are these people? And when he briefed me, guess what he said? If we get this and cut the stuff off, then we're off the air, both television and radio. I'm like, what? And I said, you need to come in my office and explain. And he said, yes, it's true. So, if our airing program on television and radio is hinged on an entity outside of government, I got to let the president know this one. So the day that people get this, we're done. I said, sorry, tell them, no problem, we'll, we'll talk later. <laughs> When they complain about the telephones, no text phones and stuff, she said to me, an orange O or something. And orange is our partner, so we won't call it amount. But they owe us. And when she told me, and I said, oh, but they got telephones on display. And they got the modem. And you say you're looking for these gadgets, but they owe us. Then we go there, take the telephone, take the gadget, the balance they owe us, they can pay us later. Fair deal? So beginning next week, we'll be going around for the people that owe us. And if you owe us and you got something that we can use, then we'll settle with you. You will give it to us. And then if you got balance, you pay us later. Fair deal. Ladies and gentlemen, the LBS is ours. We must take care of it. But I make a certain and sudden pledge to you. Please, grade me in the next six months. If you don't have safety boots, you will have it. If you don't have helmets, you will wear one here. If you are not paid for the service you render, you will be paid. And if we're not staff, we will be staff. Because we know how to do it. We've been there, done that. We have a record for that. And like I said to you, this is just one example of how I lead. You cannot owe me 10000 and you sell cell phones or Bex phone for 250 And I see it in the glass. I'm not saying orange owe me. But then I'm sure of it. Then let me just go, get me 10 of it. Uh, I read at 250 and at 2,000. Put 30 minutes in each of them. And at 300, pay me the balance, what? 7,000 too, right? Yeah. We we'll have telephones here. Don't worry, everything will come. Ladies and gentlemen, I take over again with a new sense of commitment to serve my country, with dedication, commitment, and honesty. I respectfully submit. Thank you for coming. That was the voice of the newly Director General of the Liberal Broadcasting System, uh, Honorable Eugene. Thank you so L. much, Honorable Eugene, for that powerful statement. To officially take over today, you listen to him, gave him some strong points there, that he, business will not be as usual, things will work up, and things will be better.
So, um, as we move forward, this portion of the program is only on the master's program sheet. So, if you look for it on yours, you won't be seeing it. So, um, we will now have um, the gown ceremony. And for that, I'll call on um, our outgoing Director General, <laughs> the OIC. We, 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 we've been joking more like that, so let me just say it here. Our outgoing Director General for two months will handle the um, gun ceremony, and that is our powerful HR Director who served as OIC for the past two months during the transitional period, Madam Laura S. Brown. Put your hands together for our powerful DG. All protocols are served. You know, today makes it exactly two months since I became the officer in charge. And I want to say to His Excellency um, Ambassador Joseph Yuman Buaka, congratulations for your two months in office. Because today makes it two months in office, exactly two months. And I say, happy two months, Honorable um, President of the Republic of Liberia. Having said that, we are people of gratitude, employees of gratitude. Our outgoing Director General, Honorable Estelle Liberty Cameron, please come up. And we'll call up her mentor, Mr. Aaron B. Cody, who I admire so much. He has taught me a lot over the years. So please do us the honor for and on behalf of the employees of the Latino Broadcasting System to come home. Thank you so much. Also, when he was making his remarks, I mean his statements, he didn't mention somebody. But I'm going to call up secretly so that she can please do us the honor to you know I'm talking to get up and come, please. Please now. Uh, yes, sir. I'm not going to call Auntie uh, Tara, please do us the honor to, to forgive him. He didn't mention your name, but we know you. So, Tara, please do us the honor for, on behalf of the, the staff of LBS to now our boss. Ceremony. I will call on two staff from the Information Ministry um, in presence of Josephine and Massa, who um, wants to appreciate their former boss for downing of our Director General. Thank you for Eugene Lavin Pagon. 
ਸਹਿਯੋਗ